Hi everyone, I am Dana with Piedmont Park Conservancy and today we are going to be reading Shark Lady by Jess Keating. While we're reading our book today, I want you to think about something that seems scary. Sometimes when we have a dream or we see an animal like a shark, we think, oh my goodness, that's really scary. I don't know if I can handle that. So I want you to think about something that scares you while we read this book and at the end we'll circle on back and we'll talk about it. All right, well, let's jump right in. Twas Saturday, and Eugene wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animal, the sharks. Eugene pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with her sharks? To breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugene's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugene dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebble sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugene knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugene decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove. This time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugene wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugene's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugene's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugene saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as the ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugene what to do. Forget those sharks, be a secretary, be a housewife. Eugene wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. But Eugene knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugene dove. She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they were put together both inside and out. Despite all of the people who didn't believe in her, Eugene was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugene's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugene finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugene collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered before. On a research mission exploring the Palau Islands, Eugene was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mueres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves. Still, 
and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugene's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugene had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot many still believed that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugene knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugene fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugene was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugene's dream was now a dream come true. And that wraps up our book, Shark Lady. As always, with our readings, we have a story time takeaway for you. And today, I actually have two. Our first story time takeaway is to follow your dreams, even the big ones, whether it's as big as Eugene's dream, like the size of a whale shark, or smaller. You should definitely still chase that dream. And the second one being that just because something seems really scary right off the bat doesn't always mean that it is. Just like the sharks that Eugene studied, everyone else thought that they were scary, but Eugene knew that just because they look scary doesn't mean that they are. So keep those two story time takeaways in mind and we will see you on our next live reading.